Hello my soccer universe, to a review of a full week of Austrian soccer we had a cup round, quite an interesting one with a major upset in there as well and we also had a Bundesliga round that was really interesting, it was all draws on Saturday you know all the European teams only played draws and we had all wins on Sunday and most interestingly there is of course now that Austria Vienna are really cementing a third place something that no one would have expected ahead of the season but you know no one really expected for Salzburg to drop off so dramatically Salzburg is an absolute mess they themselves say they're playing way too slow and yeah, there's a lot of crisis talk there. They're even rethinking now their strategy of how to buy players. They're talking, we need a few more experienced players in the squad. So watch out for the transfer window for Salzburg. But yeah, I would say we'll jump right into the action and we'll start with the cup round. Well, Lusk reached the quarterfinals of the Austrian Cup thanks to a super lucky 2-1 away win of Voigtsburg, a Voigtsburg team that is in the bottom three of the second league currently. However, they were much the dangerous team throughout the game, creating more chances. Lusk really had problems breaking down the defense and Voigtsburg took duly the lead in the 34th minute through Krinza. However, just eight minutes later, the first real nice attacking action gave Lusk the equalizer when Berisha plays it over to Taui, back to Berisha, who then finds Schul and it's it's 1-1 out of nowhere, to be honest. Right after the half, to shore up the defense a little bit, Coach Shop brings on CIS, who actually strikes after two minutes in the second half. Lusk lead 2-1 more or less against the run of play. There was then a crazy scene around the 55th minute where in one action Voigtsburg hit a crossbar, the post and then a last ditch save by the goalie. They also hit the crossbar one time later. So they probably would have deserved an equalizer. However, Lusk move on to the quarterfinals. The hopes for a title are still alive. Salzburg up next. Salzburg had no trouble beating Tirol at home. 3-0. We also had a relatively easy win for Sturm Graz against Blauweiss Linz. Sturm Graz having a 2-0 halftime lead. Hartberg went to Lustenau. Won there easily 3-0. Austria Vienna's 1 0 win at Horn was also more workman like. But it's the remaining three games that are the storylines. We had Stripfing beating Rapid 2 1, a game that Rapid never should have lost. They took a lead in the first half through Hofmann and had really good chances to double, if not triple, the lead. And then Stripfing in the finishing stages of the game scored two goals that were both assisted by the Rapid defense. Very unlucky, but in the end, it's the big sensation of the round. The winner Schwarzer's Bregenz over GRK was not a as surprising to be honest. Bregenz wins it 2-1. And then the big cup clash was between Wolfsburg and Klagenfurt. It was 1-1 after regulation. Then Wolfsburg score first to Tiana Ballo. Robach then equalizes. Goes to an epic penalty shootout. 10 rounds and it's Robach who is the tragic hero missing. Well, it was not the jump in the top six that I hoped for. Lask only play a 1-1 against Hartberg. And I would say the most positive thing for me was that I had a nice afternoon with my wife. Because the kids were playing with their cousins this time around. So it was only the two of us. And that was actually quite nice. I think it was the first time that I went to a game with my wife alone. Which sounds weird, to be honest. Early November weather, you know. It's time to cuddle up. <laughs> so it was very good that I had my wife with me there as well. The game from the get-go was going in the direction of the Hartberg goal. And Hartberg goalie Salinger did not have a good start to the game. I mean, there was an early header by Schul that he didn't even put on goal. In the sixth minute, Salinger plays it out right into the legs of Schul. And it was a two-on-one. You had Entropy at Schul. You had another defender. Schul tries to go around the defender and then gets the shot not right off. I think if he would have put it to Entropy over... This would have been a goal. And then even a minute later, Salinger hits over the ball and it just goes parallel to the line, not even close to goal. So momentum definitely with Lusk, but that actually then stopped a little bit of momentum. Hartberg got better into the game, but there was still the next great chance. It was after Schul lobbed it over to Flecker, who took a really nice shot that then was saved by Salinger with his dangling leg. And those were the chances for Lusk in the first half. Hartberg, there was not much coming. There was maybe a wide range shot and then there was a deep ball in stoppage time where Prokop already wants to play it over to Mijic. His ball hits the head of Sea Eyes right on the path of Prokop who again can cross it in and Mijic then into the empty net. I don't know where the defenders were there and it's 1-0 against the run of play. Coming out of the halftime break, Lusk storming, earn a corner kick and from a short corner Smolcic heads it into the net for the 8th minute and you think now the onslaught is coming. Yeah, the onslaught was coming but it was coming for Hartberg who for the next 
10-15 minutes created quite some dangerous situations where Siebenhandel needed to save but most of the shots were on to him but still this was a rather rough period for Lusk but then coach Job made the changes and yes this was the big match of Job against his former team Hartberg you know we also have many former Hartberg players in our squad as well so you know the teams knew each other really 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 well but with Berisha Liwichi and Talavierov coming on there was a little bit more solidity then in the team and Lusk created more chances the biggest one came probably to Stojkovic who was on the outside and didn't get his shot off correctly it didn't even hit the goal I wonder whether he wanted to hit Schul in the center instead of putting it on the net himself where it probably would have been a goal and then also very late on Tawi had a great chance saved off the line and try as you might Lars could not get the goal it was also really really annoying that Hartbeck were just in the last 10 minutes so content with the draw that it every opportunity they were just lying on the field and as much as i do like hardback they might actually be at the moment my second favorite team in the league this did not improve my liking of them so yeah it's a 1-1 one -one draw i think this is a really good point for hardback for Lask. it's a chance missed because you know you could have gotten into the top six with the win yes it's still 10 rounds to play to make it into the top six but the order got a little bit taller if you were to ask me Salzburg continued to stumble through the league, only managing a nil-nil at home to GAK. Last place GAK and to boot GAK had even the much better chances in that game. There was hardly anything from Salzburg. Yes, in the 43rd minute, Gadu, who made his debut for Salzburg, got sent off for a rough tackle onto the shin. But it was really, really meager what Salzburg was showing on the pitch. GAK earning their nil-nil, probably should have gotten more. One goal by Frieza was not given for an offside. Late on Salzburg, when the GRK was actually pushing for the first win, had a great counter attack where Konate scored, and there was a really marginal offside that actually prevented Salzburg getting a super undeserved win. Coach Pep Linders, in addition, was also sent off for, you know, first complaining against the referee and then applauding the yellow card that he got. The top clash, of course, was Sturm Graz against Rapid, 1v2. And while Sturm Graz had some early chances, this was very much a game where there was a lot of fight and not a lot of class. It also didn't help that Sangare in the 39th minute was sent off with a red card. It starts to the shin, was a clear red card, unfortunately, for the game, probably, because I think 11v11, this would have probably turned out to be better. Then Rapid just kept it tight and kept Sturm Graz more or less away. They broke late when Johnston had a cross in and Yadimchi could tap it into the net and everyone thought that Sturm Graz is not gonna get the win however when Ivo commits a handball in the box it's a penalty and Belly in the 90th minute gets the equalizer for Rapid and it could have even gotten better for Rapid with a man less Wimpern had a chance where they hit the post so it was not the absolute top game that everyone hoped for there was of course a lot of pyro again as well but it ends in a 1-1 draw and this means that everything still very much undecided on top of the table. Austria Klagenfurt do get their revenge for the cup defeat in the midweek. They beat Wolfsburg 2-1 thanks to two penalty goals, both scored by Bobs. In the first one was a hands penalty that he converts with luck in the 12th minute to make it 1-0. And then the second one was a foul penalty that was most clear, and Bobs in this time with conviction converts that one. But the game was a whole lot closer than the tunnel scoreline might have suggested. A goal by Gattemeyer was disallowed due to the offside in the build-up. However, Klagenfurt also could have made it 3-0 just before the half. They had a good chance there. Second half, it was more defensive from Klagenfurt. Wolfsburg were trying to get back into the game. They actually got a goal back in the 70th minute with a laser from Alton Nashville. From far out the box, he just volleys it into the net and pink dunking away from him. This was a really great goal. Then it was more counter-attacks from Klagenfurt. However, Wolfsburg were creating chances but they could not find the equalizer which probably would have been deserved overall but it's the first win for Klagenfurt or Wolfsburg this season.
PSG Tirol get a huge 1-0 win over Altach, which kind of relieves them a little bit more of the trouble towards the bottom of the league. The winning goal was scored in the 40th minute by Quincy Butler after an Altach attack was thwarted at their own box and a long ball forward. This is 2-2 two and, two, and it was a nice finish by Butler to give Tirol the lead. Altach probably had some good chances early on, but the more active team was always Tirol and Altach cannot find an equalizer. They are still looking for the first win under their new coach. And Austria Vienna are continuing their great run, more or less cementing their third place with a 2 1 win over Blau Weiss Linz, a comeback win nonetheless, because Blau Weiss Linz, despite the game being largely dominated by Austria Vienna, were always dangerous on the counter attack. They had a few chances before, and then in the 30th minute, it was a really nice attack via Anderson, who places over to Ronny Waldo, who back heels it in the path of Simon Seidel, takes a shot, wickedly deflected by Reinhold Ramftl. I don't think this would have gone in, so I count this as a Ramftl on goal to give Blau Weiss Linz the 1 0 lead. Yes. As I said, Austria Vienna had more chances, but it was then in the second half where they really came out in the 52nd minute. A very similar attack to the goal from Blau Weiss Linz finds the ball being played via Ramftl to Barry, who wants to take a shot, but it becomes an assist to Maurice Malone, who adjusts himself and gets the equals in the 52nd minute. And then Malone assists Prelet, who runs on to goal, quickly stops, takes out defender Maranda, plus the goalkeeper Wittek, and can put it in the empty net with one nice move. And then Blau Weiss Linz cannot really find an equalizer, it actually was closer that Austria Vienna will get a third goal. Well, you've seen it already in all the tables that I put in during the match reviews that not winning against Hartberg for Lask is a real downer because Hartberg maintain a two-point cushion over Lask and they have a game in hand. And given how Salzburg are playing, this could be a three, maybe even a five-point cushion, meaning that Lask definitely looking more on the outside, looking in right now. And that's also what the chances for qualifying for the top six shows. Yes, there's a whole lot of games still to be played, uh, 10 rounds, but it's not that straightforward, I would say, to get into top six. On the positive side, you're again level of points with Blauweiss Linz, which I think was the last time in after round one, which kind of fits since this is now the mirror image of that round. On top, we see Sturmgrad still having a three-point cushion over Rapid. We have also Austria Vienna, just two points behind. They are really good. I mean, the two Vienna teams are doing really good this season. And then it is Salzburg. Yes, two games in hand. If we give them those six points, they would be right in between Rapid and Austria Vienna. And that tells you that Salzburg is really not that good. On the bottom, you know, the bottom three, Tirol, Altach, GRK, those are the ones that will go against relegation. And it's curious to see whether Altach and GRK can actually get wins. Having the points will make it even, even tighter. And I think Tirol is not quite in the clear yet, but at the moment, Tirol look actually quite good. Looking at the upcoming games, I think a Saturday slate is a very interesting one. GRK against Tirol. This could be advertised as a relegation duel. Potentially the first win for GRK this season. We gotta see that. We have Hardware against Sturm Graz, a Styrian Derby with a lot riding on it. Sturm Graz will need to win because they wanna keep on going from strength to strength, but also Hardback will need the points. And then Wolfsburg against Austria Wien. Wolfsburg is kind of a little bit so and so. You know, sometimes it can be really good, sometimes it can be really bad. This will be a very interesting one to watch. Let's see if Didi Kuper can take down Austria Vienna. On Sunday, Lask have to go to Altach. I'm a little bit fearful of that one because all our bad streak started against Altach at home in the reverse fixture and you know Altach still don't have a win under their new coach. I'm afraid this could happen but on the other side maybe maybe Lask can get something going for once. Lois Linz hosts Salzburg. Cannot really predict what's going to happen there. And then Rapid against Klagenfurt should also be a foregone conclusion but this Klagenfurt team is quite sturdy this season. Well, in conclusion, last Styrian week ended with a loss to Sturm Graz, with a lucky win in the cup, and then a rather tough draw against Hartberg. Overall, I think you see that things are starting to work, but still a long way. I have myself resigned that it will probably be the bottom seven, only with a really, really big push you could get into the top six. However, that league is really tight at this moment. I mean, we have basically anyone between spots four and nine could 
realistically reach the top six and fight for European spots. And even if you're in the bottom half, you can get into a playoff there. So quite an interesting setup for this league. So with that, I'm looking forward to how this is going to pan out. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Lask will make it in the top six. Let me know your thoughts on the Austrian league this season. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll talk to you soon about more things in my Austria Bundesliga universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!